Bouncing fireballs of death is some of the most fun I've had in Diablo 4 to date. The Staff of Endless Rage was one of the first unique items that I had dropped for me while playing my first playthrough of this game all the way back in Season 1, or actually I think it was Season 0. Since then, I've been hooked on the Fire Sorcerer and trying to make fire builds work. Now this is the second installment of our ultimate unique showdown, so we are going to get to see how this item compares to the Fractured Winter Glass. Sure, you can do pit farming with the Staff of Endless Rage, but how fast can you actually do it? Let's find out. Greetings Internet, DDA here, and as always, Classic, I'm going to showcase for you one of my pit runs just so you can see how it performs in the pit, just so you can see that I'm not just pulling this information out of nowhere i actually did grind the pit out for almost an entire two weeks with this build um, i definitely want to get more than like a couple days of data just so i can try out different variations of the build one of the big challenges i had with this build was the fact that it has a severe lack of movement speed uh, as compared to the fractured winter glass and another challenge i had was that the fractured winter glass ccs a lot and that actually um, made a big difference, not only in your survivability, because the the summons, the the conjurations would actually go far ahead of you uh, and and CC mobs that you wouldn't even be on your screen. So you could easily walk up to them and, and kill them. And even further than that, the CC actually increase your boss damage uh, when you would get to the boss because you could stagger the boss uh, pretty much three or four times. Before it became a little too much uh, with the, fr the Fractured Winter Glass and the Frozen Orb. Whereas with the Fireball, um, y you can't really CC very well. E and we did try to maximize our Stagger ability because that's where a lot of the Sorcerer damage comes from right now. You know, we don't have very high damage much else elsewhere. So, we got to work with what we have. So, there were a lot of challenges with this build. I had a problem with survivability. I had a problem with crowd control and your your bot the ability to stagger the boss your attack speed is a lot lower than if you would use a wand focus but being that this is specific we're doing this for the staff of endless rage we're locked in in that you lost some you lose some cooldown by not uh using a focus so therefore you know a lot of your defensive abilities are not coming up as quick they're just a lot of negatives to this build to be honest with you where it does excel is it does very much excel in open world farming and helltide farming i've come out with a video about how you can effectively whisper and helltide farm with a fireball build i'll link that video in the video description below i think that's a much smoother fireball build than this one but again for the sake of the the contest and the ultimate unique showdown i wanted to use staff of endless rage in pit farming just to see where it fell so now to go into the build and the fireball staff of endless rage pit pushing farming build it's really a pit farming but the skills that you're going to have on your bar are teleport Ice Armor, Flame Shield, Lightning Spear, Fireball, and Hydra. Now, Lightning Spear and Hydra... Well, Lightning Spear serves a big purpose in this build. Namely, to activate the lightning damage of our Elementalist Glyph. Uh, that's very important. So that is very important on there. Um, it also gives us another source of Vulnerable. So, but you can see here with a 17 second cooldown, there's going to be a lot of downtime on this. Um, I mentioned previously about our lack of cooldown, us not using a focus. So that's a big issue. And Hydra here is just a little bit of extra damage. Like you get a little bit of extra multiplicative damage from the Conjuration Mastery. You get a little bit of extra damage because it's a pyromancy skill and it synergizes with your, you know, how you're scaling pyromancy. There's a little bit of synergy there, so it does add a fair amount of damage. We don't really invest too much into it. But, you know, another option here would be you could put um, Inferno on your bar if you liked grouping everything up uh, effectively. I didn't think it was necessary because I felt like I could position well enough that I didn't need the grouping. And then likewise, I definitely didn't need the mana because I, I built this build to be sustainable full mana without um without needing inferno and being that our cooldown is so low uh, you can't really rely on that anyway so i decided to leave it off now your enchantments are pretty much locked in um 
pretty much locked in. You know, we have Firebolt Enchantment because, again, Fireball does not burn naturally. So we, we use the Firebolt Enchantment to enable all of our burning synergy. To be honest with you, this is really sad. Um, I, I don't think that this should be a thing with Fire Builds. We shouldn't be struggling and wasting enchantment slots to enable our burning synergy. The other build should have to do that. Like, if you're running an ice build with Devouring Blaze, you should have to sacrifice one of your enchantment slots for Firebolt. But why am I doing that in a fire build? Blizzard, why? Why do I have to sacrifice one of my enchantment slots for Firebolt? I should just burn naturally. We would love this to be like Hydra enchantment or something because we spend so much mana in this build. We would love for it to be something else. Maybe even ball lightning enchantment. Bring that back, you know, with the lucky hit. Fire Fireball has a high lucky hit chance. We could bring that back. But nope, we are locked in to Firebolt, and that is sad. And then likewise, we also have the Frozen Orb enchantment, because again, we are casting pretty fast. This also enables ice damage for our Elementalist Glyph. And then likewise, we are going to pick up Hoarfrost for the extra boss stagger damage. We just we tried to maximize our damage as best as we could, and Frozen Orb is a good way to do that. It also is another way that we enable vulnerability damage. So we have two ways that we're dealing vulnerable. We have vulnerable from the Frozen Orb, and then we have vulnerable from the Lightning Spear. Now, going over your skills briefly, two and a Firebolt, pretty standard. Max out on your Fireball, and then go for the Destructive Fireball for the extra Critical Strike damage. Then we are, again, grabbing Frozen Orb for our first enchantment. And then, well, really our second enchantment because the other one is Firebolt. Uh, and then grabbing Greater Frozen Orb for that vulnerability. That is very important. This is going to be how you're enacting Vulnerable the most. Because, again, Lightning Spear has a very long cooldown in this build. Grab your Elemental Dominance for an extra damage. And then max out on your Flame Shield for the duration. And then grab Shimmering Teleport. We are going to need that DR because this is a pretty squishy build. Max out on Glass Cannon. Grab that Elemental Attunement for the one point. And we are also maxing out on Precision Magic. We don't have a crazy amount of triggers in this build or really important triggers. Like, we're not using this for mana. The main reason that we have Precision Magic in here is because of Boss Stagger. It's the main reason. Because, um, you know, you have the Crippling Flames... So that is activating and then st helping you stagger the boss. So I really wanted to make sure that I was staggering the boss as much as possible because that's going to be a big portion of your boss damage in this build. So the precision magic in is in here quite literally just to stagger bosses. So now we also have a three and a mana shield. That's going to be up always. And we don't have any points into protection mainly because warmth is very strong. They recently buffed Warmth, and they almost, I think, doubled the healing from Warmth per uh, per uh, per unit that's around you. So this is a lot of healing, and it is actually a very, very much healing. So I switched a lot between, like, points in Warmth and points in Protection. I found that Warmth was better, and better for your survivability. So we're going with Warmth for now, but, you know, test it out for yourself. You do, uh, the protection is really good to clear poison. So that is something like if you're facing a lot of spiders or something like that, it gets a little annoying because you have to like use flame shield or ice armor to clear the poison, but it's all right. I think we can get by with it. And then quite literally, we have the three points into conjuration mastery just for that little bit of extra damage. We will be having mostly two summons up and sometimes three. So six to 9% multiplicative damage. It's not bad. So then moving down uh, to our uh, mastery skills, we are maxing out on everything here. Three in Inner Flames, three in Crippling Flames, three in Devouring Blaze. Again, Crippling Flames, mostly because of Boss Stagger. To be honest with you, I've taken this in and out of the build a lot because we don't need the Immobilize. Uh, because Frozen Orb is CCing mobs, we get the Devouring Blaze activation and the extra damage. So literally, this is only in here for Boss Stagger. And then we kind of already talked about it, but we do have the three points in a Hoarfrost here just because we're using the Frozen Orb and we like the extra boss damage during Stagger. And then likewise, we are maxing out on Soul Fire for the extra damage when we're standing still, which can happen a lot. It does happen a decent amount. 
And then warmth, uh, putting two points in here, not maxing it, although I would love to max it, just don't have the points, though. Um, and But the healing is really strong at two points, I would say. And then Isu's Ferocity capping us out on the rest of our points for that Ancient Flame and extra crit damage and critical strike chance. Now going into the gear, uh, the gear is pretty, pretty locked in because the Staff of Endless Rage is of course taking up two of your slots. Uh, really big there, Staff of Endless Rage. Uh, it's a huge investment and I really hope that when Blizzard does the rework of the unique items, they really take into consideration how much you're losing. So I really hope that, that when they re I know they keep buffing the, the, the extra damage of the third cast of Staff of Endless Rage. The item is still not balanced. It needs more than that. And I hope Blizzard realizes that, that we need more than just one power in a staff. But okay, going over the rest of your gear, we are using the Harlequin Crest. You could use Godslayer Crown or a regular uh, helm here, like one that has the Conjuration, the Conjuration Reduction. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but the one that gives you DR when you cast a Conjuration skill, you could use that one uh, with cooldown reduction. But of course, Harlequin Crest is always going to be your maximum damage. And I think that because they add, when they added the Spark, um, you know, crafting of the, the Uber Uniques, they became a lot more accessible, so most of you should have a Harlequin Crest by now. Uh, we are using the same chest that we used in our previous build. This has a lot of mana per second. It also caps us out in armor. We are definitely, definitely not doing a permanent flame shield build in this build. When you give up the cooldown reduction on your focus, pretty much a permanent flame shield build is impossible. So we have to cap out on our armor with that armor roll and the total armor temper. Now, the Gloves of the Illuminator, super strong. They keep buffing it. My Gloves of the Illuminator are pretty good here. Of course, we're using that with the Staff of Endless Rage. If you're doing a Fireball build, definitely have to use these gloves. The cool thing about it is the attack speed, the Fireball attack speed, is actually in a separate attack speed bucket. So you're getting that like 10 to 15% attack speed in the attack speed two bucket so you can actually cap out at 100 percent attack speed and then get a little bit over that with the gloves of the illuminator pretty nice there uh and it also emphasizes that you could you would really want a ga on that fireball attack speed so that kind of highlights that there but you can see i have a maxed out aspect and a plus six on the fireball so that's pretty good really good there we are also using to bolts will you can see this is a very unique driven uh, build there's a lot of uniques in here really reducing the amount of normal legendary aspects uh, that can you can use in this build which to be honest with you is a huge uh, setback it makes it really tough uh, to fit in everything we actually only have three available slots for unique aspects so we had concussive on the armor and then likewise to bolts will for the extra damage there's really nothing uh, in a pant like yeah you could add more survivability to the build but the damage is so low that um you really need this extra damage and then also additionally i'm actually using a legacy esu's heirloom here and this is because of the movement speed i mentioned earlier that this build is limited by movement speed it's very true when you're doing speed farming movement speed is incredibly important and because this build has a lack of cooldown with teleport uh because this build doesn't have a lot of conjurations giving you that conjuration mastery uh, the movement speed on your Esu's Heirloom is incredibly important. So I use the Legacy one here because actually it gives you 188 movement speed uh, for five seconds, which pretty much means you can keep that movement speed buff up permanently. So yeah, uh, permanent dashing movement speed sounds good to me with that Esu's Heirloom. So now you can see with my amulet, my amulet's actually pretty good. It's pretty darn good, to be honest with you. Um, there are some areas it can improve. But we got a decent attack speed roll, uh, near perfect critical strike roll, plus five to devouring blaze. I could get a plus six if I triple crit it, but I only double critted it. So um, a plus five is good, right? Now, if you got a GA and you triple critted it, that'd be plus eight. So I'm actually missing three ranks of devouring blaze here. The perfect amulet for this build would be probably devouring blaze and glass cannon and then attack speed that would probably be the perfect amulet but finding one that's like that is like a needle in a haystack that's the holy grail um i have not found one like that uh kudos to you if you do 
but then we also tempered uh, critical strike damage and flame shield duration now the attack speed it's very important that you count up where you are with your attack speed because remember if we talked about last time we're getting about 10 percent from our paragon board so we need 40 percent from our gear in order to cap out with the uh ancient flame because we are using ancient flame on the ring so you can see here i have about 13 percent on my amulet and then i have 17 percent and then 17 an additional 17 percent pyromancy attack speed on the temper right so 17 17 plus 13 that is what 47 47 so we are a little over capped uh we we actually did adjust our paragon board a little bit because of that but you can see that you don't want to get pyromancy attack speed on on the temper here this is why i went for the critical strike damage because that would well over cap us we don't want that we want to make sure we're at that cap so we're making the most of our stats we are also running ring of starless skies in this build i think it's perfect for the fireball build solves your mana issue the stats are great for the build plus the 50 percent multiplicative damage like you can't go wrong there are any there aren't many aspects that can give you that high of a damage multiplier so it gives you like a huge damage multiplier and it solves your mana issue you're getting two for one there it's a great item for the sorcerer and then we are using a normal legendary ring this is a very good ring uh, except for the damage roll of course we have double attack speed on there greater affects critical strike damage resource generation and then of course we are running the ancient flame and then i i didn't mention but we are using three curses on the amulet for the extra 20 percent um multiplicative crit damage so totaling 60 percent multiplicative crit damage 120 percent against healthy targets so really strong there really high amount of damage that's our big multiplier so my gear is pretty good right like five ranks of devouring blaze capped out on um attack speed Ring of Starless Skies, really, really strong gear here. My Staff of Endless Rage is actually pretty darn good, like perfect aspect. Three to the Inner Flames. Uh, you could get, again, if you greater affixed it and triple crit it, you could get a plus six. But I would need a triple crit it here to get a four. And I thought I didn't want to waste like 400 million gold on doing that. So I thought this was good enough um where it is you know 90 percent damage to close not bad now going into your paragon board uh briefly one of the things that i've noticed now that i'm building more variety of builds uh in this new with this new gear set settings this new gear loadout that we have in the game i just feel i don't know if other people um are noticing this please comment in the comment section below uh if you if you agree with me on this but i feel like there's less variety now in paragon boards like I felt like I had more options before, before they changed the stats. I don't know if that's me. I felt there was like more nuance to the Paragon boards, but now I feel like I'm just really locked in. Like, like for an ex a good example is this note here. Like you just need to take this note. You need that, you need that maximum life. You need it. You can't skip out on this. Um, so I feel like there are just more nodes that we're locked into now. And I just feel like there's less variety in the Paragon boards. Because I felt like this node was optional here in the in the Enchantment Master board. But now I feel like it, it's mandatory. Like you have to have it. But okay, going and, and likewise, like the choice here in the beginning of the starter board, um, I feel like you just have to go on this side. Like, yeah, we usually did go on that side. But now I feel like it's just mandatory. You have to go on this side. So coming up, like we're we're getting the flame feeder here again, uh, pretty standard. It just you activate it with a low number of points, and then enchantment master, same thing. Elementalist, grab this node over here for the maximum life and come out of the board. We are going into our searing heat next, and we are grabbing the searing heat legendary node while also grabbing all this critical strike damage and this fire damage we are actually not grabbing any of these rare nodes in here because it saves us like six points uh and allows us to get more damage elsewhere in the board so we're coming through very efficiently coming through here activating this control glyph for very very little points uh this is how we're maximizing our points here we are then coming into the burning instinct board throwing in our tactician and then coming down here and grabbing this safeguard we don't need the armor here 
but we absolutely need the damage reduction. The damage reduction to elites, you get an extra 20% damage reduction from elites. This is a very squishy build. You are going to need this damage reduction. Um, I tested it with and without and with and without. Ultimately, even though we're spending like 10 points to come down here. And in fact, if you didn't get this node, you could even squeak in an eighth board. And I tested that out. Um, I tried it out. It's not bad to uh, with an eighth board. You can squeak that in because down here, you're very close, right? Very close. We could easily get an eighth board here. But you do need this damage reduction. It's very, very needed. So test it out. If you want to go like utter glass cannon and go eight boards, you can do that. But um, we really need this damage reduction. So then next up, we are going into our enchant uh, I mean elemental summoner board. Grabbing all this intelligence with the Enchanter Glyph for all that non-physical damage. Again, grabbing the attack speed here. We are not grabbing this extra node because we are overcapped already. So that, that's not needed. So then we uh, actually do not waste the time getting this board, this uh, Elemental Summoner node here. We don't have summoners out that often, and I didn't feel like it was worth it. So, you know, just save that, save those points there. Next, going for our Ceaseless Conduit, classic board here with Destruction, capping out with all that Critical Strike damage. And then for our last, seventh board, Frigid Fate, classic, activating the Exploit for extra multiplicative damage. We do have decent vulnerability uptime in this build with the Frozen Orb and the Lightning Spear. So, and then Frigid Fate also is worth it. So, this is kind of what I mean. Like, I feel like I'm just kind of co copying boards between every build. Like, yeah... In this one, you go and get the Searing Heat. You need a little bit more damage reduction, uh, grabbing this node over here. But other than that, it just feels like it's very cookie cutter. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just me. But tell me what you think in the comment section. Now, to go over my results of the, um, the actual unique showdown, to see where the Staff of Endless Rage compares to the, fr the Fractured Winter Glass, well, you can see here... It's about 20 tiers of a difference. Uh, really, really big considering how much they nerfed. Um, you know, because a lot of people say that, you know, it was about a 10 tier buff that we got when they reduced the power. I think it was about a 10 tier buff if you were in the upper tiers. Like if you were in like the 100s, like the 120s, 130s, 140s, it was probably a 10 tier buff. But if you were sub 100, it was actually a 20 tier buff. Because they nerfed the earlier tiers more. So the fact that I was stuck at tier 79 here uh, is really sad. Because, uh, you know, I would have been sub sub Nefarion or whatever it is. The final mat. I would have been sub that prior to the reduction. Which just kind of shows why they did it. Because I'm sure a lot of builds weren't even able to get endgame materials. <laughs> it's really sad. But yeah, you could see a huge time difference. Like, even though I dropped down 20 tiers, I still wasn't able to meet the time compared to the Fractured Winter Glass because, you know, the movement speed was huge. Movement speed was huge. Also, the boss damage, like, I, it takes a really long time for the Staff of Endless Rage Fireball build to stagger. It just doesn't have the attack speed using the Staff uh, to hit as many times as it needs to actually stagger. And I have some notes here. Like it was a, I was able to do a tier 89 in about five minutes, um, but I noted the survivability is an issue with the lack of CC. I died sometimes, like straight up, I, I died sometimes, like especially in tier 89s, uh, I died uh, sometimes. So and that's a problem when you're trying to speed farm, right? You don't want to die uh, and lose out on the run, and, and it really reduces your efficiency when you when you're trying to speed farm so overall here staff of endless range ranked at number two i'm curious to see where the other unique items fall it was decent like the farming was decent uh it's not bad so if like if you were a hard like you really love fireball and you wanted to use staff of endless rage you get away with it you you would be fine you are almost twice as efficient using the fractured winter glass like, you're getting twice the materials for this, uh, even less time. It's over twice. It's probably like 2.5 or three times more efficient 
to do your fractured winter glass farming. So to then just go briefly on how I rated my gear, I, I overall I rated my gear an eight. We had some sevens. Uh, like my ring is okay. Like I have a damage roll that's not great. I would either want um, you know a higher roll like vulnerability damage or fire damage or damage to close or something like that just an overall higher roll in damage here or critical strike chance would be nice and then i already went over my amulet how that could be better it's decent though the five to devouring blaze i gave it an eight uh because it, i do have the five to devouring blaze and overall my stats are pretty good i need some gas and i would like to triple crit the devouring blaze so that's not perfect there so i gave it an eight I think the Staff of Endless Rage itself, I gave a 9. The Gloves of the Illuminator, I gave a 9. Yep, so, and then Staff of Endless Rage, I gave that a 9 as well, yeah. Because the aspect is perfect, and um, I do have the three ranks to Inner Flames. So overall, decent gear, slightly less powerful than the Fracture Winter Glass. So I'm sure if I had, like, a comparable gear, like, I'm sure if I had that... Uh, devouring blaze like utterly capped like i had a way better amulet i could pr maybe do tier 89s in the two the sub two minute like the sub three minute tier 89s maybe if my amulet was like perfect so that's it for your staff of endless rage uh pit farming how it compares to the fractured winter glass again uh, more than twice the efficiency you get for using the fractured winter glass so we can see that there's just a huge difference uh, like the fractured winter glass could probably do up to i would say tier 120s i would say would be about where it would start getting a little bit too difficult for the fractured winter glass whereas i think the staff of endless rage you're gonna probably cap out at around tier 99 um you might even be able to go higher with the fractured winter glass maybe even like into the 130s we'll see how the rest of the unique items pan out next up we are gonna do because i had that vote online we are going to do the the Starfall Coronet Helm. I have two different Starfall Coronet Helm builds that I'm going to be putting on this list. So we'll be able to see where they fall in comparison. So if you like this video, if you like this unique driven data series that I'm doing, please hit that like button and please hit subscribe for, to see the rest of the series. And as always, turn your dial to Random Number Gaming for weekly updates on Diablo 4.